Good morning children, there's Lance here again. I'm in a special place today, I'm in a forest. I'm just checking the river, I'm looking for hippos and crocodiles, but what I'm really here for is the lions. I have a, a, a very special guest this morning, a guest explorer who's coming to help me this morning. And uh, his name is Oscar. He's, uh, he's hunted many lions over many years. And he's coming to help me hear a lion and hopefully see one for you children. How great will that be? I can one. Wow, he said we've heard one, so we need to go and have a look. Uh, let, me just, uh, let me just follow forward and just see if I can see it. We're hiding behind a log at this moment for protection. I hope this is good as so we're going to see one. But if not, we know we've heard one this morning. Oh, how great is that? We know that we've heard a, a tiger, a lion this morning, or a tiger, I don't know which in these woods. There's all sorts in here. Hi children, I'm in a place where I can actually see my face at the moment. And so here we are, we're in the same place. We're still hiding behind the woods and hoping that we can see a lion walking around. But if we don't, there's not an issue because there's a great story in the Bible all about Daniel in the lion's den. And uh, we're going to be looking at that later on. And what we need to do right now is we need to go to praise and worship. And that will give a chance for me and the great explorer Oscar to get back and get away from where these lions are. Over to praise and worship. Bye bye. praise and worship this morning i hope you really enjoyed that i certainly did right what we're going to do now is we're going to go to bethany for a time of prayer over to you bethany now we're going to pray and we're going to pray for the nhs workers we're going to pray for sunday school and children's church and also we're going to pray for protection over our lives 
We're going to pray for past body and the services to touch people's lives. Let's pray. Father God, I ask you, Father God, please God, help the NHS workers, God, provide them, God, with the things that they need. And God, plead the blood of Jesus over them. God, that you would help pass the body and his services to touch people's lives. God, that they would, God, fill people with your Holy Spirit, God. God, that you would, God, help, God, the world leaders, God, that there, nothing, no disease would come near them today in Jesus' name. Help Sunday school and children's church. And I saw, God, that we would be, God, blessed, God, and that you would fill us not with fear, God, but with a hope, God. God, that you would be with us in this time, God, and that you would bless this time today. Father God, in Jesus' name. Shikia la la la, shandadi shikia la la la, wakulopo nikishia la la la, that you would help us today in Jesus' name, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit right now, in this place, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Bethany. What great prayers they were. And I'd just like to thank you very much for your hard work and uh, producing the video and sending it over to us all. Just before we go on, I'd like to give a great big Norwich shout out for Josiah Bricker. He was the correct one to guess the closest to the game uh, score of last week. Well done, Josiah. Keep up the good work. Uh, we're now going to go over to the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, and uh, we have a special guest, Rebecca Curtis, uh, will be reading the story for you. Over to Rebecca. Hi boys and girls, my name is Leona and I am a lioness. My family have, li have lived for hundreds and hundreds of years, even way back to the Bible times. And I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible. It's about a man who was a king called Darius and another man who loved God. What do you think his name was? Was it David or Dominic? Daniel? It was Daniel. Of course it was Daniel. Well, my family of lions weren't free range and we didn't hunt for our food anymore. We had been captured and we were kept in a huge den. There were trees, there were great rocks, there was water and we got fed by the keepers but it wasn't the same as being wild. Well, sometimes we were absolutely starving. We weren't fed for days, and then we'd be thrown in a gazelle, or a wild pig, or a man, or a lady. Delicious, they were the best. But you couldn't do that nowadays, because it's just bad manners, but it wasn't bad manners then. Daniel was captured too. He was. He was taken away from his mum and dad as a young man and he was taken to a country far away and he became a slave and a servant. But Daniel was not alone. He loved the Lord his God and God came with him as well and God helped him to learn a new language, to learn his new job as a slave and a servant. Daniel was not alone. And Daniel and God just loved chatting with each other in the morning at his office desk, at lunchtime on his lunch break, in the evening at home in the window of his house. <clears throat> Daniel and God just loved each other. The Bible says that Daniel was the best at everything he did. He was. He was the best. He was even better than the other men on his job. He trusted God and he loved God and it wasn't long before the new King Darius noticed Daniel. Hmm, this man is amazing. And Darius made Daniel the second most important person in the land. <clears throat> How do you think the others felt, the other men that were working with him? Do you think they're like, yay! Daniel is the best, we love you Daniel, well done Daniel. Or do you think they were jealous and angry? They were. He never lies, he never takes long lunch breaks, he doesn't spend half the day on his phone, he never steals anything. They were angry and jealous and they began to plot. Hmm. How can we get rid of Daniel? He needs to be dead but they mustn't find out that it's us. Oh, Darius, you are a great and a mighty king. In fact, 
you're the best king we have ever had. You, we've written a new law for you and you just need to sign it. Sign it here in your new king pen. And the law says, no person in the kingdom is allowed to ask or petition or request or pray to any man or God except you, O king. Everyone will know what a great and a mighty king you are. Well, that sounds quite wonderful, said King Darius. And anyone else who is seen asking or requesting or praying or petitioning to any other man or God in 30 days will be thrown into the lion's den. And King Darius is like, well, it's a bit extreme, but it sounds good. After all, I am the new king and people need to get to know me. Oh, well, they watched Daniel. And what? It wasn't long. Look, look, there he is by his window, talking to his God, praying to his God. That's the third time today. Let's go and tell the king. Daniel has broken the law. Daniel has broken the law. The king was very upset and he was angry with himself for signing such a silly rule. He had made himself like God and that wasn't right. Could he change the law? He talked to his advisors. No, sire, you cannot change the law. It is signed with your very own pen. The king gave the command, but it broke his heart. Daniel, servant of the most high God, you have broken the law. You must go into the lion's den. Well, my family were happy. They were starving. They hadn't eaten for days. And the men let Daniel down on a rope. You couldn't open the door because they'd all get eaten. And they lowered him down on a rope that evening. Mmm, delicious. We love tasty men and women. Is there enough to go round? There's not really enough of him. He's not very big. King Darius could not sleep a wink that night. He didn't eat any dinner. He didn't want to listen to any music. He couldn't even go to bed. He sat, he stood up, he looked at the clock oh, and he sat down and he kind of prayed, oh God of Daniel, please help him. And in the morning, he ran to the den. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you love and serve, has he rescued you? King, live forever! My God sent his angels to close the mouth of the lions. I'm not even hurt. Oh King, I have never done you or oh God any wrong. God had protected Daniel. He wasn't alone, was he? God would never leave him. And the king is like, pull him up out of the pit, rescue him. And they pull Daniel up. And then the king said, throw in the men who caused this to happen. My family were hungry and starving. Oh, they had lovely full bellies that day. And they lay in the sun and there was even some left over for later. And Darius wrote a new law that everybody should worship the God of Daniel throughout the whole of his kingdom because he was a mighty God. He was a God of miracles and he protected Daniel. Hey, thank you, Rebecca. What a great story. Good, good thought from a lion's point of view. But before we go on, I just want to quickly look through a couple of points in this whole story of Daniel in the lion's den. And firstly, these, uh, Daniel had people that come against him. Children, we have people that come against us, don't we? We have people at school who come against us and they come against us because we believe in God. And these men in the Bible came against Daniel because he believed in God. And they sneakily went to the king and asked him, King, this is what we need to do. We need to 
put, make a, a decree that everybody must worship, worship the statue for 30 days and no other gods. And King Darius signed a decree. But Daniel wasn't having any of it. He opened the windows of his house and he stood there and prayed to his God in heaven. See, he wasn't frightened. He prayed to his God in heaven because he knew his God was a real God. He knew, believed in him. And that's what we have to do, children. We have to not be worried, not be frightened. People will come against us. But we have a God in heaven who can protect us. And this is another point I want to look at. There's Daniel. He's gone into the lion's den. He's been put into the lion's den. And hungry lions would have been in there. They would have been making a lot of noise. But Daniel went into the lion's den. And God protected him. As Daniel get out and he's talking to the king afterwards. He says, God sent angels to close their mouths. What a powerful thing. The protection of God upon his life. And that happens. We, we have exactly the same children. God will protect us. In all the circumstances that are going around, God will protect us. And yet again, the third point is that, they believe, that he believed in his God. We see it in the prayer. We, believe, we see it in the point that he's in the lion's den. He believes he's God. And he believes he's God. Do you believe your God, children? Do you believe in the God in heaven with all of your heart? Do you believe that he's the king of kings? Children, that's a point that we have to think about. A thing, a place that we have to be where we have to make a decision that we believe in a God in heaven, the great King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is our provider. He is our protector. Children, do you believe in God? And perhaps right now as I've spoken, things have clicked in place and you think, well, I want to believe in God. But how do I believe in God? Well, the Bible says that we come to God with a faith of a mustard seed, a small piece of faith. And the very fact that you're thinking about God produces maybe as a, just a spark of faith. But we also have to know that like these men that were having a go at Daniel, they were wrong because they had other agendas. And often we have other agendas in our heart. We're wrong in our heart. And we have to repent of our sins and ask God into our lives. And if you want to pray this morning and ask God into your life, that God can become your great King of kings and Lord of lords, your protector, and the God that provides for you and your family, then just bow your heads and right now just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died upon the cross for me. I thank you that you rose again, Lord, that you paid the price for my sins. Right now, Jesus, I turn from my, my sins and I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and Master. Amen. Children, if you prayed that and meant it, that God is your Saviour and you can believe in Him for everything. Amen. Why don't we just go over to Sean Brick this morning. He's another guest we have here. He is going to be doing our game for us. Sir. So over to you, Sean. So you've got to try and guess what I'm talking about or the action that I'm doing or the sound that comes from the phone and you've got to guess what animal it is. Okay, so the first one, here we go. I want you to tell me what it is. Now apparently he is the king of the jungle. Uh, I don't know what animal it is, I need you to help me. He's the king of the jungle and he's got really, he's got a really furry head. Like it's literally everywhere and he roars like this is the loudest roar. Can you tell me what it is? On the count of three, I want you to tell me what it is, all right? One, two, three. Yeah, all right. I'm hoping that you said a lion, because that is the first one. So the lion. Now, the next one that I've got for you. Now, this animal has a really long trunk, all right? And he makes a lot of noise, or she makes a lot of noise, and, um, it's this one. 
Can you tell me what it is? On the count of three, I want you to shout at the top of your lungs. One, two, three. Okay, all right. I'm hoping, again, that you said elephant. So that was an elephant. Let's just look at another one. One second. All right, so. All right, how about this one? This one's a little bit. All right, so you'll find this one, not on land, but or you, uh, you might find on land. However, they mainly sit on water and they do this sound. Oh, so they go. Can you tell me which one it is? You're going to have to shout out on the count of three. One, two, three. All right. Now I'm hoping that you said duck because that was a duck. All right. So the next one, we're going to have three more. All right. Three more for you. This one. Now, this one, you might find them black and white. They might have black and white spots. You might already tell me what it is. Don't shout out yet. Black and white spots. Um, or they could be brown, all brown. They might even have like a tag on their ears and they eat grass for days. They love grass. I, c I don't know another animal that eats as much grass as this one. But here's the noise. Can you tell me what it is? All right, on the count of three, I want you to shout at the top of your lungs. Are you ready? One, two, three. All right, now I'm hoping you said cow. And I'm hoping the next door neighbors heard you shout cow. Because that's what we're going for, enthusiasm. Now the next one. Right, now this one. A lot of people do use it as you're eating like a... If you eat a lot of food, what are you eating like? You've never heard it. You might have heard it. Or what about something that goes wink, wink? Can you know that one? If you know that one, I want you to shout on the top, on the, on the top of your lungs. On the count of three. One, two, three. All right. Now I'm hoping that you said pig. Yeah. All right. Now this last one that I'm gonna do. It might be one that I've said before, it might not, but I want you to tell me the minute you hear me talk about it, I want you to shout and shout and shout until I stop. Now, he's got a really furry face and he's the king of the jungle. Can you tell me what it is on the count of three? Are you ready? One, two, three. Lion! Hey, I hope you enjoyed that game. Well done, Sean, great game. Um, children, I really do hope you enjoyed that game and not too worn out. Uh, well, we're going to settle down right now. We've got Heidi this week, uh, yet again, coming to help us. Uh, she's going to be doing a, a craft for us. Uh, so, uh, children, why don't you just listen to what she's got to say and try and do the craft and yet again send pictures over to us and we'll put them in your scrapbook. Uh, well done, children. Over to you, Heidi. Thank you. So today we're going to make a, a craft that is going to help us to remember the story of Daniel and the lion's den. So we are going to make a lion who will open his mouth and roar ready to eat Daniel. But when God shuts the lion's mouth, we're going to be reminded of the scripture that tells us that he sent the angel to shut the lion's mouth. So you're probably familiar with the shape. We're going to start by making our origami shape out of a piece of paper. You're going to need a 1A4 piece of paper, a pair of scissors, uh, I've got three coloured crayons, a pen and some sticky tape or you could use print stick, um, anything that you can stick his little mane onto the outside of the line with. Okay, so we're going to start by making the A4 piece of paper into a square. So you're going to take one corner and fold it over to be flat with the opposite side of the piece of paper and this little flap on the bottom is going to come off to make the rest of the piece of paper into a square so you can cut that off with your scissors or you can fold it over like this again you just have to make it so that it lines up with the edge of the paper there and fold it flat at the bottom and then if you run your fingernails just along the edge then you should be able to pull it off and make a square Paper. We're going to use this little offcut. Oh, I haven't quite done that flat just there. We're going to use this offcut later to make the lion's mane, so keep hold of that. Okay, you're going to open out your square and fold corner to corner the opposite way. 
and this is going to give you a nice cross in the middle so that you know where the middle of the square is and then we can take all four corners and fold them into the centre. Super important now you need to turn over your piece of paper so we've got no flaps on this side and we're going to fold all the corners into the centre again. So you should have a little cross in the centre that's been folded from where you folded your paper and just fold all the points into the middle like that. Then you're going to take one side of the square and fold it over flat to the other, open it up again, twist your piece of paper 90 degrees and then fold it over again. And that gives you all of the folds to be able to pop your fingers into the flaps and you've got your origami shape for the lion's face. Okay, so the next thing that I would do is take your pen and we're just going to draw the lion's nose on because otherwise it can get quite confusing and you don't know which corner is which when you're trying to draw his face so from here a little bit of a tricky bit this one you just mark your lion's nose out like that and then you can see which corner of the paper his nose is on when you fold out flat again so we're going to use our shape just like this and I have started to draw another one just so that I can remember where to draw his features. So, if I've got my piece of paper folded flat like this and the lion's nose is in this corner here, on this side I'm going to draw his mouth. So I'm going to move that one out of the way. Lion's nose in the corner over here. And so I'm going to draw the lion's mouth just like that. So that needs to just be a little mirror image of each other. And then if we turn it over, this side is going to be his eyes. So we've got the lion's nose over here. And then we've got an eye and we can just draw it in the same sort of space as it is so that they reflect each other. And then if I open him back out again, he should have two eyes and a mouth, just like that. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do, we can fold him flat again, much easier to colour him in when he's flat like that, is we're going to take a yellow crayon or colouring pencil or something um, and we're going to start to colour in his face. I'm going to use this one because it's got my other bits on there as well. So I've just gone like this and from his nose, if you go out, then you will end up with a circle and do that on all four quarters. So we're just colouring out like that on his nose. And that makes the lion's face yellow. Areas but the yellow face. Okay, so next step we're going to add his teeth. So we're going to fold back flat again and this time open it up. Now I've got the eyes facing upwards and I'm going to open them up towards me and the teeth are going to go on these two triangles here. So I'm going to just draw some spiky teeth at the side and in this space in the middle I'm going to colour in with my black crayon or colouring pencil or pen or whatever you've got. Colour in that black space and that is the inside of the lion's mouth. Now on the empty triangles that we've got left there, so now he roars. And on the empty triangles, this is where we're going to write the scripture. So you want the scripture really to start at the top here. So 
eyes facing uh, away from me this time. I'm gonna fold them up so that they fold away from me and I'm gonna write my scripture down there. So the scripture that I've chosen is uh, Daniel 6.22, my God has sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. So we're gonna just write that in this gap. inside of your origami shape should look like this. You should have the lion's mouth and teeth on both sides and then your scripture in the center. And then the last thing to do to complete our lion is to give him a mane. So what I've done to make the mane is just use this last piece of paper that was cut off earlier and I've colored it in with orange. And so whatever you have handy. And then I've used my scissors just to chop out some strips. My orange strips, just like that. And chop those strips in half. And I've run a piece of double-sided sticky tape, just stuck it along the sides of my lion's face. And then I've put these on, but you could use your Pritt stick, just run the Pritt stick round, and then you just stick your pieces of orange paper around the edge. And that's definitely got to be the last thing that you do because I did it the other way around and got them all in a big tangle. So once you've finished your scripture and your lion's face, stick his mane on and you should have a lion that will roar and then shut his mouth. Have a lovely rest of your day. Hey, thank you, Heidi. Uh, really enjoyed that craft. Well, children, we're now coming to the end of Sunday School again. I really hope you've enjoyed yourself this morning. And if this is your first time, please come along again. Um, we're here Sunday mornings. Sunday afternoons, we have children's church at 3 o'clock. Really uh, encourage you to go and have a look at that. Uh, Mum and dads, if you're free at uh, 6.30 tonight, we have church service. Uh, and then we have again Wednesday at 7.30 and Sunday morning at 10.30. Really encourage you to come along just to watch us and uh, join in in our praise and worship. Uh, and uh, let's just see what God can do. Uh, we'll see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.